Hello everyone and welcome. We are sitting inside of the 2019 Mazda Miata MX-5 RF. So it's got the hard top convertible and what better vehicle to be sitting in uh, to discuss horsepower and why horsepower is so overrated. So I'm not saying you shouldn't care about horsepower, but in this video I'm going to give you five reasons why I believe you should care far less about horsepower than perhaps you do. Uh, and to start things off with an analogy, I feel like if I were to walk into a gym, uh, which is an intimidating place to me because clearly I don't lift weights that high in weight value, uh, you know, there, there's an ego associated with being in a gym. There's, there's the egotistical side of it, and it's like, look how much weight I can pick up. Cool, great, whatever. Uh, and, the, and the same thing happens in the car world with horsepower. We have these bragging rights that we put behind a single number, that single horsepower number, and it's almost as if every other factor is far less important. And so my, my goal with this video is to tell you that no, those other factors are very important. And so starting off, reason number one why I think horsepower is overrated is that we all simply go with the peak horsepower. That's what everyone talks about. What's the peak power that this thing has? This car has 181 horsepower. If you were questioning how much horsepower does the Miata have, someone would probably tell you, well, it's at 181 for 2019. That's how much power it has. But that peak number doesn't tell you the full story. If a car is turbocharged, if it's supercharged, if it's electric, uh, you know, all these things will dramatically change the curve and how much average horsepower you're actually putting down at any one given moment. So a great comparison sin and it's kind of disappointing for me. But anyways, we're gonna talk about my S2000 for a moment. Uh, the car weighed about 2,900 pounds as I had it, maybe 2,850, something like that. and had about 270 horsepower at the wheels. Now a Nissan Leaf weighs about 3,500 pounds, so significantly heavier, and it has about 150 horsepower at the crank, not at the wheels. Okay, well that electric Nissan Leaf out accelerates my supercharged S2000 with significantly more power and significantly less weight to 50 miles an hour, to 10, to 20, to 30, to 40, all the way to 50. It's not until 60 miles an hour that my S2000 actually starts to be quicker than a Nissan Leaf. And that's kind of silly. Like you look at the numbers and you think, well, why would it be? It has more power, it has less weight, the end. But that's not the story. Electric motors create a lot of power on the low end. They have that peak torque immediately. And so on that low end where the S2000 is doing absolutely nothing at all and just hoping that one day VTEC will kick in, uh, you know, that electric car is putting down full torque. And so it out accelerates it even though it weighs more and it has less power. So the whole point of that is to say that the curve is very important and the peak number is not all that important, especially as we start to get more and more electric cars and you can see how quickly they can accelerate with low horsepower numbers. Now, point number two is what does horsepower actually tell us? Well, it's a major contributing factor to a vehicle's top speed. So there's really two important things for determining how fast can a vehicle go. It's aerodynamic properties, how much drag does it have, and then it's horsepower. Weight plays very little role in determining a vehicle's top speed. It plays a tiny little role, but really it's not that important. It just tells you how long will it take you to get up to that top speed, but it won't really change your top speed all that much. So horsepower that defining role. But why do we care about top speed? I mean, it's something that hardly anyone is ever going to attain in their vehicles unless perhaps you live near the salt flats in Utah or in Germany and you're constantly on the Autobahn and you get to try out you know, these high speed runs. Uh, but for the rest of us living on public roads with speed limits and the true constraints of like life, uh, you don't get to go up to those top speeds. It's just not something that's feasible. And so what's more important, of course, then is acceleration. And horsepower, of course, does play a role in acceleration, but only up until a certain point. Because at some point, you become traction limited rather than power limited. So here's my example. A Shelby GT500 has 760 horsepower. That's amazing. And it gets you excited. And you're like, oh, heck yes. I want to drive a GT500. I do. I do want to drive one. 760 horsepower sounds awesome. But here's the thing. That car hits 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds. 
Why? Because it's traction limited. A Tesla Model 3 Performance, which weighs about the same, a little bit less, but has all wheel drive, but only about 450, 470 horsepower. So it's down, you know, 200 horsepower. It's able to accelerate to 60 miles per hour in 3.2 seconds. So 0.3 seconds faster, even though it weighs about the same and is down about 200 horsepower. Why? Well, it's all wheel drive and it's capable of putting down all the power. It's not traction limited, it's power limited. And so with a lot of cars, once you start getting into these crazy high horsepower numbers, they become traction limited and you just have to ask yourself, what's the point? Where do I wanna be able to accelerate quickly? Do I wanna be able to accelerate quickly on the low end? Which I think if we were all to say, you know, where do I want all that power to be? Where do I wanna enjoy myself? It would probably be in the zero to 60 range because that's what we actually get to live with on a day-to-day -day basis without breaking the law. Once you get into the 100 to 150 mile per hour range, yeah, it's awesome to have that on a track, but how often are you on a track? And if you're not, you don't even get to experience that joy. So where the you know Shelby GT500 is power limited and not traction limited is at an illegal speed. And so it's like, you have to start to wonder why am I putting so much value on that one number uh, when useful power is more important than a, a giant power number that ultimately is gonna tell me what my top speed is that I won't actually be able to achieve unless I go on a track or some salt flats or the Autobahn. So I think there's an importance in distinction there of what do you care about? And if it actually is acceleration, then you should care about useful power, not a meaningless peak number. Now, number three, and this is where the Miata starts to shine, is that horsepower is heavy. That's just the facts. When you start adding power, you either need a larger engine, you need turbochargers, you need cooling for those turbochargers, you need cooling for all that power that you're making, you need to beef up your axles, your transmission, uh, your brakes as a result. So once you start adding power to a car, you start adding weight to a car. It's just inevitable. And so by adding that weight, you know, you, you sacrifice a lot of things. So here's some examples. This Mazda Miata weighs about 2,340 pounds. A Ferrari 488, amazing supercar, right? 900 pounds heavier than this. Uh, the new Supra, 1,000 pounds heavier than this. Uh, the new Corvette, 1,200 pounds heavier than this. Nissan GTR, 1,500 pounds heavier than this. Shelby GT500, 1,900 pounds heavier than this. Tesla Model S Performance, uh, 2,600 pounds heavier than this, so more than double this car's weight. And then the Porsche Taycan Turbo, yes, it is pronounced Taycan, not Taken, even though that's how it's spelled. And the reason I think Porsche is doing all this, putting a turbo on it, uh, calling it Taycan, even though it's spelled Taycan or Taken, uh, is to distract us from the fact that it's 2,800 pounds heavier than this Mazda Miata. 5,100 pounds in a sports car. And so, you know, maybe it's this luxury EV sports car and that's kind of the new thing is it's just gonna be this absurdly heavy thing. But I don't think we should just give Porsche, you know, a pass on having a 5,100 pound car. I think that's absurd. And I think vehicles like this, which you have the weight down, it enhances so many aspects of the vehicle. And as a result, you know, yeah, it doesn't have that crazy acceleration, but this thing's hitting zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. That's quicker than a 2010 V6 Camaro. It's quicker than a V6 all wheel drive Dodge Challenger. So this thing is quick. And another part about why weight is so important is from an aerodynamic standpoint. And so let's say you create something that has really good downforce, a car that has 2,000 pounds of downforce at speed. That's great. That means you're going to be able to corner really well. Well, let's say your car weighs 4,000 pounds. So you've got 2,000 pounds of downforce on top of the 4,000 pound car. Well, because of that, you're gonna be able to corner at 1.5 Gs, which is very respectable. It's a very high number. That's super impressive. Uh, however, if your car weighed 2,000 pounds and it still had 2,000 pounds of downforce, then you could corner at 2 Gs rather than 1.5. So simply by taking out weight, but having downforce remain the same, your cornering is going to improve dramatically and that's all you're changing you're just changing the weight of the car you're not changing the downforce or the aerodynamic features of that car 
Now, point number four, I want to talk about acceleration because obviously we all, as like car enthusiasts, enjoy acceleration and that's why we like horsepower. But I think one of the distinctions that we need to make about what we enjoy about horsepower is jerk rather than acceleration. So what's the difference? Well, velocity is speed uh, that you're going, right? And then your acceleration is the change in rate of your velocity. Now, jerk is the change in rate of your acceleration. And so what that means is, you know, if I'm not accelerating right now, and then I put my foot down and we're instantly at peak torque, that would be very high jerk, you know, puts me back in my seat. That's fun. That's response. And that's what makes electric cars very fun is because they have that immediate torque and you get that really high jerk that puts you back in your seat. So if you have a really high horsepower car, but it's turbocharged and it's got a giant turbo and it takes forever for that turbo to spool up and you put down your foot and you wait 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 and then that torque starts to build up, it's not as thrilling than if you just put your foot down and immediately get planted in your seat. That's more exciting and that's jerk and that's more about response rather than how much power the vehicle has. So it's not necessarily that you have to have a high horsepower car to have fun accelerating, it's that you want to have response from your car when you are accelerating. Okay, now point number five, we're talking about horsepower versus fun. So, you know, think about like creating a little spreadsheet of what makes a vehicle fun and then weighting the different items within that spreadsheet, you know, certain values to say, okay, I care about this. Like for example, you care about horsepower, you care about acceleration, you care about braking, you care about steering, you care about, you know, how it handles, what it feels like, you care about grip. And so there are a lot of things that you will care about and say, these are all the qualities that I want in a vehicle. And horsepower is just one of those qualities. But the sad thing about horsepower is that if you tend to weight that value higher, if you say this is more important, you start to sacrifice all those other values. So, you know, handling gets worse as, as horsepower goes up because you add weight. Weight is really the critical thing that combines all performance aspects of a car, and it's so underrated. We don't care about it nearly enough. Not enough cars, I mean, this is the lightest fun car that really exists, that that actually was trying to be an enthusiast vehicle uh, that is sold in America today, this is it. Yes, you can get like a smart 4.2 and it weighs less, but it's not designed to be a car that's fun to drive. This is rear wheel drive, it's manual transmission, uh, and and it's designed, it's a little roadster, it's designed to be a riot to drive. And so, you know, all these cars focus on being fun to drive and they seem to care so little about weight, even though if you look at that spreadsheet and all the metrics that you say matter to enjoying driving, acceleration is just one of them. Weight impacts that and power plays a negative role on basically everything else on that spreadsheet. And so that's kind of the disappointing thing to me uh, that we all care so much about power and it's always this horsepower war and, and we don't seem to break that cycle and say, you know what? Hey. 300 horsepower at the wheels is plenty. Give me a car that weighs 2,500 pounds and you're gonna be having a riot in it. And and we don't take that approach. We instead take the approach of, it's okay that it weighs 4,500 pounds, uh, but hey, guess what? It's got 800 horsepower, so that's cool, right? So, all of this is to say that I just appreciate the heck out of what Mazda has done with this vehicle. The new ND Miata, and this is the 2019, I am six foot one. I don't like the RF because it has a little bit less headroom, and with the soft top, you get a more uh, immersive experience when you put the top down. Um, so I'm not uh, big on the RF. I think it looks better, but I think that's its only redeeming quality. It's also heavier. But as far as the 2019, Mazda has made some really cool changes. The engine has more horsepower. 181 horsepower, it's revving higher, 7,500 RPM, and best thing of all, I'm six foot one, I fit in here, and my knees do not hit the steering wheel uh, when I let the clutch out. Why? Because they now finally have a telescoping steering wheel in the Miata, which is just... Oh, it adds a lot to the experience when you can bring the wheel a little bit in, you don't have to worry about your knees, and you just get to focus on enjoying how well this thing behaves and just how nimble and tossable and fun it is. I mean, Mazda has knocked it out of the park with this car, and if I can recommend a vehicle to anyone uh, to, to have fun at safe, legal speeds, 
This is it, and it's just because of weight. Weight is the thing we should all care way more about uh, and talk about more and be like, yo, Porsche, why is your uh, new EV? Sounds cool, it looks great, I think it's gonna be you know, fun to drive, but why is it 5,100 pounds? That's insane. We need, to, we need to get out of that. We need to get more into the mentality of cars under 3,000 pounds, uh, and I think we will all have much bigger smiles on our faces. So anyways, thank you for listening to my ramble about why I don't care about horsepower that much and why I think you know vehicles like this are what make driving fun. I uh, appreciate you guys watching, and if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.